Thank you for the introduction and thank you to all of you for being here. So I'm a PhD student from Politecnico di Milano and I'm in my third uh, year and my PhD is about uh, wastewater reuse in agriculture, in particular looking at the modeling of impacts and uh, risk assessment procedures. Uh, before starting uh, uh, to talk about my PhD, I would like to spend some uh, words about my research group. Uh, so, uh, my research group is the Safe Water Research Group in Polytechnic of Milan. We are a group of uh, nine people. So, we have uh, one associate professor, one uh, junior assistant professor. We are PhD students and two master students. You probably have met here around me and uh, Alberto, which will spend here uh, three months in uh, January. And uh, more or less, we, we deal uh, uh, with all that regards uh, water and wastewater treatment and monitoring. Uh, in particular, here I reported just a quick view of the water cycle. And so we, we deal from, we, we start from the advanced treatment uh, process modeling. So uh, we deal with uh, uh, disinfection, uh, both chemical or uh, chemical agent or physical. Uh, we deal with absorption and uh, oxidation processes ma mainly, and we deal with uh, both chemicals or uh, microbial contaminants. Uh, then we focus on the water quality distribution networks uh, using uh, uh, different uh, different approaches, and uh, we also deal with um, uh, monitoring strategies to. Uh, yeah, monitor the water quality both in the water distribution network but in the drinking water treatment plant as well in the wastewater treatment plant using different approach approaches and uh, finally uh, we deal with risk assessment procedures both for microbial and chemicals and this last part is my main uh, research field so it's what I'm gonna talk about you today um, about and I'm uh, more focused on wa water use. Uh, about water use, uh, my, my PhD is the third of uh, uh, the third PhD that deals with uh, wastewater use. In particular, we had a first one with Ricardo, which uh, focused on chemical risk due to wastewater use, and the second one with Jacopo, which focused on uh, uh, microbial risk related to wastewater use. Uh, but I'm not an expert of all the all the topic of the group, so for any doubt, of course you can ask me. But uh, yeah, I reported the contact of Manuela, which is the professor uh, supervising all of us, and she will know for sure better than me. Uh, so starting with my uh, my topic, uh, just a quick introduction about wastewater use. So why it is uh, needed for uh, doing reclaimed wastewater use? Well, because we have many stress factors nowadays uh, as the rapid urbanization and the climate change which are mm -hmm. increasing the water scarcity and uh, in this context agriculture is the sector that is consuming most most water in particular here i reported a, a scheme uh, representing the atypical agriculture atypical ir irrigation process so we have water water that is derived from the environment and uh, it is used to irrigate crops. Uh, typically, we have the ad addition of uh, uh, mineral fertilizers. And in this context, typically wastewater treatment plants discharge, discharge their effluent in the environment. Mm. So here, uh, it could be interesting to uh, move to this scenario in which wastewater is reused directly to irrigate crops. And uh, this would uh, imply uh, saving in uh, mineral fertilizer because the effluent of wastewater treatment plant is enriched in uh, nutrients, but also saving in uh, water from the environment. So this is the first, uh, let's say, goal and uh, need. But uh, it is important to specify which type of are doing because we can have direct reuse, so the water is directly uh, derived from the wastewater treatment plant to the to the crop, or indirect reuse, which is actually what is happening for the most, at least in Italy. So water is discharged in the environment, and then from the surface water it is used to irrigate crops. And 
these two practices uh, bring with them several uh, impacts, also different. So as the positive, we already mentioned water and nutrients recovery. While for the negative one, we can have a compactment cross-contamination as well as the salinization of uh, soil and crop or uh, human and environmental health risk. So in this context, it's interesting to develop a comprehensive framework which can simultaneously evaluate all these impacts. Uh, while from the regulation, uh, we already have a water reuse regulation, which defined at the European level, which defines uh, four uh, quality classes for reclaimed wastewater. Uh, it also stressed the application of risk management plans. And in particular, uh, this need for uh, use of risk assessment approaches is stressed also in other uh, regulation, water regulation or proposal of revision for water regulation. So there is a need to, for shifting the, the control based, based on the risk assessment procedures uh, instead of uh, fixed values uh, coming from uh, like old tables, at least in Italy is a typical approach. But uh, what is the, the problem here? That we have many different risk assessment procedures which can uh, uh, deal with uh, different uh, endpoints of so the environment or the human health risk, different targets, so chemicals or microbials, and dif different effects like chronic or uh, acute effects. So in this con, and they are usually used as standalone tools while the, the goal is to combine them because we have many risks up and yeah, at the same time. Uh, so here again, the need for a, a, an integrated approach, including different type of uh, risk assessment procedures. Uh, so in this context, uh, the, the goal of my PhD is to develop a, a holistic uh, risk-based framework for assess the uh, use and support its correct implementation. And uh, the work is articulated as follows. So in the first task, I focus on the evaluation of all the impacts related to wastewater use. Then I focus on the development of a prioritization framework to decide where to implement wastewater use in which plants. And then finally, I focus on developing more uh, integration of different risk assessment approaches, in particular risk from multiple exposure pathways, uh, risk for multiple endpoints, so environment and human health, and uh, risk from multiple targets, so chemical and uh, uh, microbials. The first three tasks are uh, already completed, while in this year I will focus on the last two, and in particular the, the fourth task is the one that I'm uh, performing here in collaboration with uh, uh, Remy, uh, Dominique and Eric, uh, and, but I will talk about it later. So starting from the first one, uh, basically here a uh, uh, literature review was made and um, uh, about like looking for impacts in wastewater use to evaluate which are the gaps and which are the possible future directions. All the articles were classified based on this uh, framework. So we identified um, six compartments in red. So the, where the reuse uh, happened. Uh, 10 impact models, so uh, what are the impacts that are modeled by the different processes and the model variables uh, intended as the, let's say, the end point of the model, so which kind of contaminants uh, or matrix is analyzed by the models. Uh, and this is a, just to give you a quick overview of what is the one of the outputs. So here we have this heat map that helps us to see where there's a lot of uh, studies in literature while there are, where there are gaps. So here we see the correlation between the different categories. So again, the compartments, the models, and the variables. And um, uh, just to, to sum, sum it quickly, uh, the, the two main outcomes that emerge are that a prioritization methodology for implement the wastewater use is missing, as well as, uh, integrated procedures uh, evaluating different types of risks are missing. So these two are the two topics that will be uh, studied in the uh, following tasks. So starting from the first uh, gap, the question is, uh, where do I implement reuse? Because usually water utilities, they manage, uh, I don't know, hundreds of wastewater treatment plants. And of course, implementing reuse is a cost. Uh, 
uh, and you need to make a choice, but there are not, let's say, a suitability index for saying, okay, this uh, wastewater treatment plant is good for use, or this is better than this other one. So the goal here is to uh, define a prioritization framework. And uh, this work is articulated in three steps. So first, a uh, techno-economic model was developed, uh, considering both positive and negative impacts of wastewater use, uh, as well as both uh, wastewater treatment plant characteristics, but also territory characteristics to decide where it is better to implement reuse. Then uh, data were collected from the wastewater treatment plants. And uh, the most important thing is that these set of plants were classified based on different criteria uh, with this logic. Like if I have a class of similar wastewater treatment plant and I analyze one that is representative for the class, then I can extend the result for that one uh, wastewater treatment plant to the whole class. And finally, the, so the, the model which was developed was applied to these representative uh, wastewater treatment plants. So regarding the model, we considered, as I said, uh, effluent parameters, so uh, the flow rate, the nutrients content of, um, uh, of uh, the effluents, and the conductivity, which is a proxy for the salinity content. While for the territory parameters, we consider the type of crops, their water and nutrients requirement, and their sensitivity to salinity, and as well as the weather conditions or rainfall, basically. Then uh, all these inputs were fed to the model uh, to obtain these four outputs, um, where the first three are positive uh, outputs. So uh, the saving on primary fresh water, the saving of mineral fertilizers, and they avoided greenhouse gas emissions related to the production of mineral fertilizers. While the last one is a, is a negative impact. So, uh, what is the crop yield that we lose due to salinization for the increase in the salinity content of the irrigation water? And these four outputs were then converted into economic terms in order to uh, say, analyze them all together and give a, uh, a unique index for evaluating them. Then there was the part of data collection. So we considered two uh, major urbanized areas in the north of Italy. Uh, we collected data from 95 wastewater treatment plants, and then we classified these plants based on these three criteria, so their size, their nutrient removal level, so uh, no uh, removal of nutrients, uh, just nitrogen removal, both nitrogen and phosphorus removal, and the type of crops. So what's no nutrient removal wastewater like treatment Like there are some plants, typically the small one, which uh, don't remove nutrients. Nutrients for you is NNP only. Yeah, sorry, so I, I, I didn't, I didn't say that, but I, we consider just not, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus okay. uh, because typically we don't have uh, data about potassium or uh, micro, micronutrients. And the two classes of crops, so uh, seed, and in particular we we look for uh, maize and soybean and uh, fruit and vegetables, so vines and carrots. And resulting from this, we had. 10, uh, not cluster, but class, uh, 10 classes, um, which are uh, coded by this ID. And here, just to give you a brief uh, overview of the possible result, here in the top chart, you see the, the ID we use for the classes. Uh, so you have to look at the two column, which are uh, right below uh, the code. And the column refer to the left axis. And here I reported the contribution of each, in, uh, of each output uh, reported in terms of surface specific saving. So we have a euro per hectare per year. While the dot refer to the potential annual saving, which is the uh, saving that we would have in case all the flow rate of the wastewater treatment plant is used for uh, reuse. What can we see here that, uh, in particular, looking at the yellow bars, which are the negative impacts, so the salinity, uh, the salinization impact, uh, some type of wastewater treatment plants becomes not convenient anymore to implement reuse. So the, the conclusion here is that uh, if we look at the crop, it is important because the crop water and nutrient requirement define the savings. But also it is important to consider negative impacts because in some case, 
it becomes not convenient to implement reuse. So, for example, if we are in a specific case based on the crop type and the level of uh, salinity uh, sensibility threshold, we can decide to not implement reuse. And this work is already submitted. Uh, while moving to the second uh, need that emerged from literature, we focus here on uh, risk uh, uh, integration, risk assessment integration. But before that, I would like just to spend some words about risk assessment procedure. So uh, typically, uh, we can address microbials, uh, typically pathogens, which they are characterized by acute effects. So uh, toxicity effects that happen in the short term. While chemicals, and we focus more on contaminants of emerging concern or micro, micro pollutants, uh, that they are characterized by long-term effects, so chronic toxicities, and they are characterized by a, a high uncertainty due to the reason uh, reported here. And what is the problem here? That for microbials, uh, already exist probabilistic approach that are capable of considering the uncertainty as the quantitative microbial risk assessment. While for chemical risk assessment, usually deterministic approaches are used, which are not really capable of uh, quantified uncertainty. Uh, so in, like in the traditional chemical risk assessment, we have uh, three steps. So the exposure assessment, where the goal is to define what is the exposure concentration to which we are uh, exposed. And for example, for the environmental risk is the concentration in the surface water, for the human health risk is the concentration in crop, for example. Then we have an hazard assessment where we characterize the, toxicolo the toxicology of the contaminants. Then we combine these two results and we have a risk characterization that can be for uh, environment or human. Typically, uh, so, how, the, how they are combined. The exposure assessment result, so the concentration is divided by the threshold and we have a risk, one single value. If we are above one, there is risk, below one, there's no risk. What we tried to do is to bring this to a quantitative approach, so not considering the single values, but the distributions of these values, in order to be able to consider exposure uncertainties and toxicological uncertainties and uh, resulting in a, a distribution of uh, risk uh, in order to have like a, an idea of the uncertainty which are hide, hidden behind the, the risk. These works were already like were made in the previous years. We have some paper published and also a divulgative video if you are interested to. So this uh, procedure is called quantitative chemical risk assessment procedure, so QCRA. So going back to my PhD, uh, the third task was about to quantify what is, what is the uh, wastewater use contribution uh, in terms of human health risk to the anthropic water cycle. Uh, how? By considering the risk that is related to the consumption of crop irrigated with wastewater, comparing it to the consumption of some uh, typical exposure uh, route, which is uh, drinking water. Um, so how did we do that? We, uh, this study is based on literature, so we collect articles, we, concept, we conceptualize the system in 10 compartments, and we study their interrelations. We targeted bisphenol A and monilphenol as a compound, because they are both present in crop and uh, drinking water, typically. And uh, we apply the QCRA uh, to tap drinking water and uh, food intended as cereals or fruit and vegetables. Here you can see how the concent the, these two contaminants are distributed along the different compartments. And we can see that uh, for solid matrix compartments, we have a higher, uh, typically a higher level of concentration. But here we focus just on three uh, compartments, which are the drinking water and the two of food. And we calculate the risk distributions for uh, these compartments. So you can look at this diagram here. So the red one is the uh, risk level equal to one, which is uh, uh, which means that we have a risk. And we see that for uh, both type of, types of food, we have typically an important contribution in terms of human health risk. So the conclusion here is that 
it's important to monitor uh, contaminants of emerging concern in uh, <clears throat> in crops because they are relevant in uh, in defining the the risk for human health. So, and this work was uh, published uh, last year. So, with this perspective, we uh, define the next uh, the next work, which is the one that we are performing in collaboration with uh, uh, here at Inra. So it's important to distinguish between direct reuse, because this is related just to human health risk, because we don't have the environment included. And we can see that the 85% of the articles present in literature deal, deals just with direct reuse. While in the case of indirect reuse, we pass from the environment so we can have both this type of risk. And like a minority of the literature deals with, uh, with this aspect. In addition, um, we can see that different contaminants uh, present different risk levels. So here are reported in red, like here are six uh, contaminants of emerging concern. In red is reported the distribution of human risk from literature. In green, blue, the environmental risk. We can see, for example, for uh, ibuprofen, we have uh, basically no uh, human health risk, but we have an environmental risk which is above the threshold. Why, for example, for trimethoprim, we have an inversion. So we have a human risk which is higher than the environmental. So the conclusion here is that we need to uh, consider both this type of risk if we want to prioritize these contaminants of emerging concern. Why this? Because we have many contaminants of emerging concern and we can't monitor all of them or regulate all of them, but we need to make some choices and these choices could be oriented by applying these two type of risk uh, risk assessment procedures so the, the idea is to collect data uh, both in crops and surface water the exposure sources for uh, human health and environmental risk and then prioritize uh, the risk of these two these these two endpoints with two different methodologies. One is the QCRA, which I showed before, which is based on uh, measured concentration statistical distributions. And the second approach is to use TIPOL, which can give us uh, an, uh, an identification of the risk, but is based on molecular descriptors and environmental parameters. So we don't need anymore the concentration data, which are the uh, time consuming part of the risk assessment procedure to collect those kind of data. Uh, I already explained the QCRA, so just words about TIPOL, how does it work? Basically, we have, uh, probably many of you already know, but uh, for who doesn't know, uh, like we have a list of molecular descriptors which are collected for each contaminants considered, in particular 40 molecular descriptors. Then we have environmental parameters, who a database is, uh, is filled. And starting from this and based on the set of contaminants we are analyzing uh, through a partial least square analysis, we are able to identify clusters of contaminants. Then to these clusters, in, to, to these contaminants are applied uh, characterization, characterization factor, which are uh, indicating the risk of the contaminants and they came from another software, which is Ustox. And here we are able to characterize the risk in this way. So uh, the, the idea is to compare that procedure with the QCRA. Up to now, we are in the preliminary steps of the, of the work, so I can show you this, some preliminary result. Here is, a, let's say, the, the set of contaminants we decided to analyze, how we identified 51 contaminants uh, based on their presence, both in uh, regulations but also due to their uh, frequently presence in both crops and surface water. And uh, uh, these are 51, but further screening are required. For example, if we look at the, um, for which contaminants are available, uh, toxicological data for both the environmental and the human health risk, the sample maybe here is not seeable, but it is re reduced just to the light blue one. Uh, so, for example, looking at this kind of screening, uh, we are able to uh, clusterize this, this set of 43 contaminants, because 43 because we removed the one without human health or environmental toxicities. Here we have the human toxicity, here the environmental one, 
So what we observe is that we are able to identify four clusters, and in particular, these two clusters are the one uh, which concern us more because they have the lower, uh, the higher, sorry, risk for uh, human health, and because it's inversely proportional to the risk, the level of toxicology. And here we have the uh, most concerning for the environmental toxicity point of view. And another interesting aspect is that in the different clusters, uh, we have different range of toxicity. So for example, for these three clusters, we have a very broad level of range of human toxicity, but a really narrow uh, range of environmental toxicity, while the opposite happens for this cluster, which contain uh, basically hormones, so a strong and beta estradiol. Uh, so just to give you a preliminary result, finally moving to the last task, uh, which I will perform in collaboration with uh, Michigan State University in the next year. Here, the idea is that uh, in many wastewater treatment uh, plant processes, for example, looking at the disinfection with chemical uh, disinfectant, what happened? That we add, for example, chlorine. So we are reducing the microbial risk because we are eliminating microbials. But on the other aspect, we are increasing the chemical risk due to uh, disinfection by products. So here, the, the idea is to combine the uh, chemical risk with the microbial risk. And what is the challenge here? That they have totally different time horizon uh, impacts. So we have long-term impacts and acute impacts. So here the idea is to collect <coughs> uh, the concentration data in, uh, for chemical and microbials in crops, and then uh, combine these two effects. And uh, again, we, we are, let's say, expert for a chemical risk assessment, while in uh, Michigan State University, they are more expert in uh, microbial risk assessment, so we, we will try to combine these two approaches. Uh, this is a monitoring campaign that is uh, going on to, to collect data to validate the model for the last two tasks. So uh, we are sampling the, this uh, wastewater treatment plant with, uh, with 90,000 equivalent habitants. We have two periods of sampling, four points of sampling. Uh, before and after the discharge in the surface water, the discharge of the effluent, and before and after the disinfection into the, into the uh, wastewater treatment plant. We are monitoring uh, 14 contaminants of emerging concern, in particular pharmaceuticals and antibiotics. We are monitoring PFAS, we are monitoring pathogens, E. coli, uh, e. coli, e. coli pathogenic strains, antibiotic resistant genes, and uh, conventional parameters. Uh, this is just to wrap up what I just said, but uh, so basically here are the five uh, tasks that I show to you. So the first three are already completed. So, uh, we identify the gaps in literature, uh, we develop a prioritization framework, and we try to apply the QCRA uh, as a, let's call it, preventive approach to support the water management. And the next two steps will be to combine the environmental and human at risk and the chemical and microbial at risk. Uh, that's all. I hope I didn't, uh, I was not boring and uh, I'm here for any question. Thank you.